Now, let me discuss about the antipsychotic drugs. So, if you take this antipsychotic drugs, first and foremost, you should know what exactly happens in psychosis. Let me take up in case of schizophrenia. Right, let me take up in case of schizophrenia. If you say this schizophrenia, schizophrenia is a clinical condition which is characterized by a severe psychiatric illness. Right, it is characterized by severe psychiatric illness. All right. Now, why this particular severe psychiatric illness occurs in patients with schizophrenia? Let me tell you the mechanism, right? Let me tell you the mechanism. This particular schizophrenia is thought to be due to dopaminergic overactivity in the limbic system of the brain. Okay. So why is this particular schizophrenia? This is mainly because of increase in the dopaminergic activity within the limbic system of the brain right that is mainly because of dopaminergic or activity in the limbic system of the brain now in this particular patients with schizophrenia there are even other neurotransmitters the other neurotransmitters like 5-hydroxytryptamine and noradrenaline they also play a role in this disorder so apart from increased dopaminergic activity the other neurotransmitters are 5-hydroxytryptamine and noradrenaline right 5-hydroxytryptamine and noradrenaline these are the other neurotransmitters which play a role in this particular disorder of schizophrenia now if you see the drugs used in the treatment of schizophrenia all the drugs for schizophrenia they have equal efficacy and these drugs they differ in their potency and they can be classified into the typical and as well as the atypical antipsychotics right so if you take the antipsychotic drugs these antipsychotic drugs they differ in their potency right they differ in their potency now these are classified into right these are classified into typical and as well as atypical antipsychotics right now you take this typical antipsychotics the typical antipsychotics these are neuroleptic drugs right these are neuroleptics now what is their mechanism of action remember these particular drugs they act by blocking the d2 receptors so why is this schizophrenia schizophrenia is because of increase in the dopaminergic activity within the limbic system so what you try to do is you try to block the dopamine receptors and even though the dopamine is increased it cannot act on the dopamine receptors so this typical antipsychotics that is your neuroleptics they block the d2 receptors right they block the d2 receptors okay next they but if you take the affinity these drugs they have the affinity for the 
5 hydroxy tryptamine subtype that is 5 HT2A, right? So they have high 5 HT2A affinity. Okay, next. Now let me classify this typical antipsychotics which are the neuroleptics. Depending upon their chemical nature, we classify these drugs as number one, right? We have what is called as phenothiazines. Right, we have the phenothiazines, then we have thioxanthines. Right, we have thioxanthines, phenothiazines, and then you have butyrophenones. Right, then you have the butyrophenones and then we have some of the miscellaneous drugs. Right, some of the miscellaneous drugs. Now, let me tell you what are your phenothiazines. The phenothiazines, the examples are chlorpromazine, then we have thio Ridazine, then we have trifluparazine, then we have fluphenazine. So these are your phenothiazines. The drugs what we have is chlorpromazine, thioridazine, then we have trifluparazine, then you have fluphenazine. These are your phenothiazines. You take thioxanthines. The thioxanthines, these drugs, they include fluopenthixol. Then we have thiohexine. Right? The drugs are fluopenthixol. And then we have thiohexine. These are thioxanthines. Then you take the butyrophenones. The butyrophenones, they include haloperidol. Then we have droperidol, then we have penfluridol, right? So, haloperidol, droperidol, and as well as penfluridol, these are your butyrophenones. Some of the miscellaneous drugs they include pimozide, then we have loxapine, and then we have molindone. These are the miscellaneous drugs which are typical antipsychotics. Now, after having discussed about the typical antipsychotics, which are the neuroleptics, now let me discuss the atypical antipsychotics. So, if you take this particular atypical antipsychotics, these drugs, they act by other mechanism, right? So, these drugs, they have low D2 and 5 HT2A affinity, right? These drugs they have low D2 or 5 HT2A affinity, okay? So, a point what you should remember is the typical antipsychotics they have very high affinity with these receptors. That is, they have very high affinity with the D2 receptors and as well as 5-HT2A receptors. Whereas, the atypical antipsychotics, they have low affinity for D2 receptors and as well as 5-HT2A receptors. And you take the drugs, right? You take the drugs under the atypical antipsychotics. The drugs under atypical antipsychotics are number one, clozapine. Then we have olanzapine, then we have quetiapine, then we have risperidone, then we have 
iloperidone then we have paliperidone then we have zipracidone then we have luracidone then we have eripiprazole then we have certindole then we have zotypine so these are all your atypical antipsychotics which act by the other mechanisms that is they have very low d2 and as well as 5ht 2a receptor affinity now now let me discuss in detail about the actions of the typical antipsychotics